In this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I want to talk about our season's journey and drama, baby. So get out your popcorn because there's going to be a lot of drama. And I mean, look, it's been a really fun season. This is not a criticism of anybody that's involved here. It's just <laughs> been crazy. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and in this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video, I want to talk about the drama of our season that has unfolded, and the drama in this game, and uh, allow me to express my concern for some of this drama not exactly being, like, healthy and fun, but, like, stressful and frustrating, and are there ways that these systems of the game can be redesigned to be uh, l less frustration and blood frustration-inducing and blood-boiling, right? Um, and you know what I'm talking about. Don't pre Dude, you know what I'm talking about. When you get tile-sniped, you know. You know it's frustrating. You know your 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 blood boils and your temperature rises and you get heated. You you know exactly what I'm talking about, that 300 tile, those eagles you were going for, the ants, the, the mama kill camp, whatever it was, right? Very frustrating when somebody snipes you. And um, that's not even where I want to start the story. I want to start the story way in the beginning of our season journey, which is that this game is basically like Game of Thrones. Like, everybody is lying to everybody, and I experienced that in my first season, and I, I, I playing not with the group that I'm with now that we created, um, I experienced that in this second season on this restart that I did that has been really, like, an amazing journey. Um, everybody's lying to everybody, and that's so frustrating. And a part of what we tried to do with our group, for those that don't know, um, the Smash Squad has about three fellowships worth of players. Um, at least that's what we entered the season with. And I know people like move around uh, based on where war buffs are and all kinds of stuff, right? But uh, we put a lot of structure to preventing things like tile sniping, to teaming up on things like dragons so that like everybody gets loot um, and, and more, right? We have like a way above average. I mean, we have literally a multi-page culture doc explaining like the expectations of how like one is going to conduct themselves as a member of this group, which like you might think, oh, that sounds really uh, restrictive. It's not at all restrictive. It's in fact very freeing to know that your team members share the same values you do and they're not all that complicated. It's like, don't be a jackass. It's pretty basic, right? Um, but sometimes you just got to spell it out so that when somebody breaks one of those rules, you can be like, my guy, there's this thing and like, here's where you agreed you would be, you know, a team player and this is not team player behavior. So like, what do you want to do? Be a team player or play on your own? So all of that to say this season, everybody's lying to everybody. And we went into this season with sort of a, I thought, a ride or die ally um, with our friends in Angmar. They were rolling Angmar. And last season, we we actually did something we, we had a lot of struggle over, which is that we basically, in our first season, we had so many players, we could either completely dominate the server or the other option um, was to give everybody a bunch of land and have duels and battle for stuff. And that's what we did. Everybody had some land, we dueled and we battled for stuff. And the intention is that um, with the players that were ultimately going to roll in Angmar this season, that we were like ride or die allies, you know? Like like we were in it to win or lose. We were going to we were gonna die together. You know what I mean? Just like the scene from Lord of the Rings, right? Just like the scene where where in the third movie, they're, they're you know, facing certain death. And and Gimli says, no, I I I never thought I'd die by the side of an elf. And you know, Legolas looks to him and says, you know, what about by the side of a friend? Right. And it's just like, oh, right. You know, I, I thought we went into this season with that sort of a relationship with our with our partners in Angmar. And um there was, as I described, the systems of this game create a lot of drama. Because you are joining a faction with a bunch of random people you don't necessarily know how many of them are going to share your vision for how to proceed. So they came in and said, hey, we're allies with, with Gondor. And the rest of Angmar was like, well, no, we're not doing that. So what do you do, right? And so uh, apparently we had a conversation that was like, hey, I guess we have to go our separate ways. Um, but just don't gang up the whole server against us, who I think was the half-joking comment that one of our officers made as that relationship was sort of ended, right? And so what do you know? The whole server ganged up against us and we were fighting against actually everybody, but like sometimes as many as five factions at the same time. And we were we were cornered. At the start of this season, man, 
Like, we were cornered over here. Like, we were getting pushed in pretty good. We got pushed down to, like, this line of territory. And it, it was looking pretty rough. I mean, the whole server was saying some pretty nasty stuff. Not everybody, not every player. But it was like, we're taking out the content creators. Let's go. And, you know, they were really after us. Um, and ultimately, everybody was lying to everybody. And this was the downfall. This is the drama, right? Every single, maybe not every single faction. That's not fair. But like every faction had their had their lies and deceit that they were doing with other factions. I mean, people were dealing with each other and saying they were doing things and then doing the opposite and dealing with factions that they didn't tell another faction they were dealing with. And ultimately, we had a conversation with Mordor um, that, that really, in a lot of ways, was a, a really great move for both of us. Which, to oversimplify the whole thing, was like, hey... Um, I'm tired of the drama. Are you tired of the drama? Yes. You know, we're both tired of all this lying and drama. Um, and our capitals are like right next to each other, right? I get this doesn't make sense from a lore standpoint that Gondor and Mordor are like BFFs. But we were just like, you know what? What if we just had like a no BS, no lies, no no drama relationship where we just work, we would just work together. Like our capitals are back to back. In season two, if we can hold on to each other's capitals, like if we can keep those, you get a lot of points. Right, that's the way the season objectives work over here. We go over to the challenge, or I guess the uh, target, right? Part of it's if you hold the ring. Part of it's if you own territories. Um, but a part is just like, do you have three territories and your capital? Okay. We were like, look, if we work together, this could work out really well. Um, and we had originally in this season kind of maneuvered into here to try to take mama kills. And the reason is that, like, there's really one thing Gondor's supposed to do at the start of the season. You may not know this. I didn't know this. Which is that, like, there's you, you have three choices, actually. You either take Mama Kills, lose to Mama Kills, or ally with the player who has Mama Kills. Okay? And that's an oversimplification, but uh, because you are in such pro close proximity to that unit. And I play on a roleplay server, so maybe it's different for a non-roleplay server. Um, again, I can't fathom Legolas hiring or working with Mama Kills in the same team that just fries my brain. So um we we said, hey, Mordor, come come take the Mama Kills. Have them. You should have them. Let's be allies. Let's work together. Our capitals are close. And this has worked out like shockingly well, I think for both of us. And I think we would both probably say the best part is like there's no drama, straight shooting, no BS relationship. And I tried to say this in in, in all the groups that we've been dealing with that like we're probably the most trustworthy entity on the board. Not to pat ourselves on the back, but because I have a YouTube channel and the Smash Squad has a reputation to maintain, we're not going to lie to you. We're not going to do that, right? Like, other people from our faction may have different opinions from us, but the Smash Squad, man, we're going to say what we mean and do, do what we say. That's just, like, straight up, straight shooters. And I think that has been, like, really valuable. So once we formed that relationship over here, we were, we were able to push our way up and make some really big progress in this direction. We actually had a non-aggression pact with Rohan for quite some time. We did try to ally them at some time, and they sat on our proposal for a week, a full week. Um, and then at, at some point, it, I don't know what happened. Something broke down in that relationship, and then we were warring with Rohan. I I, I like I can't even... I, I am a full-time content creator, and I can't even keep track of like why it is we go to war or when that's happening. But we went to war with Rohan, and um, I might even be missing right now that I think we're supposed to be taking their capital. Oh no, not quite yet. Um, but but like I mean, obviously there's been a, a lot of a lot of battling over here, and and we're on the verge of taking the the Rohan capital. Um, and it's not for want of having good relationships with folks. I don't think. I mean, it depends on who you ask, right? But we did not intentionally start conflict with a single group this season. Everybody came at us, man. So, um, drama. Tying this back to the drama, right? The season journey has been insane. It's not done yet. I don't know what's going to happen next. But I, I definitely feel a little bit burned. Um, because when we were getting pushed in on all sides by everybody and we had like no territory. Let me let me take a pic let me get a picture. Okay. Uh, I didn't find the picture I was looking for, but I found this, which, like, I'm sure you can decipher on the screen kind of what's going on here with the uh, fort naming. But, like, my gosh, man. On the topic of drama, if you name your forts like this, like, you, you'd better win. 
You like you have to win. If you don't win, you're losing all your territory. That's just like what's probably going to happen. Oh my gosh, like the <laughs> this, this is so ridiculous. The number of times that people have named their forts, and I think we made this mistake to a much lesser degree at the start of the season, but man, like just naming your forts, if you name it, even the, the tiniest bit provocative, people are going to interpret that and be like, all right, I'm, I'm like in until you're gone. And it, it's just a mistake. Don't make that mistake. Anyways, back to the map. I couldn't find the picture where we basically had like this land here, okay? And we had this land getting pushed in. I mean, Angmar was on our doorstep. They were all, all the way down here. Okay, they're knocking on our door. We had Linden eating up some land that we'd had over here very briefly. I mean, they, they were just all moving in on us. We had Rohan at one point pushing in over here. And before we had our relationship with Mordor, they were pushing in. Erebor had worked their way down. Rune was over here. Rune was on our doorstep. I mean, it was just, it was just total chaos. I actually am still in a location that was sort of ideal for fighting Angmar at the time. And every time I'm like, should I teleport? The, the, the location of the fight changes. So I've sort of kept my teleport in reserve for like, where do I go in case of emergency? You know, like pull the chute and Chiskel will go. But, um, okay, I'm rambling. All that to say, right? We, we came back to our ride or die allies after the sort of falling out that we'd had at the beginning of the season where, you know, the, the, the faction couldn't agree on working together. And it just was what it was, you know, sort of unfortunate. We'd wanted to have this drama-free relationship. And we came back and we said, hey, literally everybody is allying against us. Do you remember that situation that we only half joked about? Don't, don't be the ringleader for like the whole server ganging up on us. We're calling on you as our ride or die allies from, you know, from our friendships that we made in season one. Um, and the kindness that we displayed, right? The camaraderie we showed by letting everybody have territory. We're, we are counting on you to save our season. They were like, well, too bad, because we're coming for you. And that was a difficult one for me, because I feel like not everybody felt that way, by the way, right? It was, it was kind of mixed, but I felt like, man, like, can you be merciful in this game, or is it always just going to bite you? I feel like the answer is, I don't think you can be merciful in this game, which sucks, because I would much rather build friendships, and it's just one group, and maybe not every group is going to have leadership that that ultimately acts that way and makes that choice. And not everybody agrees, by the way. People go their separate ways and make their separate choices. Um, and people left in protest. They were like, I, well, I really disagree with this and I'm done playing with you um, for now anyways. So, um, but we fought our way out in, in no small part because of the, the trust relationship we were able to build with Mordor. And man, I don't know. The systems of, of uh, not even the systems in this game, the, the nature of the game, such that everybody is scheming and plotting for the ring, it's entertaining, it's stressful at times, it creates a lot of drama, but there's no shortage of stuff to do, because even when you're out of troops, there's apparently an endless amount of talking you can do with other humans about the state of the board and what the future state could look like if only our factions and fellowships work together. Oh my gosh. I don't know that, the, again, there was a point of this video in the same way that there is in all my other strategy guides. Speaking of which, if you want to just see me rip open math and metals, that's another form of popcorn. I'll have a playlist up in the top. You can check that out. Uh, but if you've got ideas on how to reduce the drama in this game for like, you know, tile capture stuff. I mean, we literally had to create a tile referee channel in our Discord where things are sorted out and you bring proof that you're the one that, you know, took the tunnel and pathed to the eagles and sieged the camp only to have somebody else steal it at the last second. And still there's drama. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm eager for your thoughts in the comments, eager to hear how your season's going. And if your experience has been the same as mine, which is that um, because the communities of this game are so ephemeral, anyone can switch at the start of the season from one faction to another. Who you play with, is it's just so loosey-goosey that like, it's hard to know who to trust, which is why we work really hard to build trusted relationships. Until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies. And again, I'm eager for your stories in the comments.